those gas connections up here at the solenoid, they were all 11 sixteenths. But I do remember, I do recall from the last time I worked on taking these off on the other unit, that some of these fittings are reverse threaded. And that's to uh, ensure that you don't make the wrong connections. You know, water, coolant connection to the torch is reverse thread. But the coolant connection to the supply side of the solenoid is not. Big lugs are three quarter inch. Interestingly, they kept the stinger hooked up with the TIG torch at the same time. Well, I just laid out the TIG torch and took a rough measurement, and uh, it looks like it's about a 20 footer. I think the other one I have might be about a 25, but uh. They uh, didn't leave me any hose to go to the uh, cooler on this end. Looks like they just had a few feet and they cut it. Either that or that went onto a barbed fitting on a cooler that was nearby. I don't know. But that's no biggie. That's just a hose clamp right there anyways. And as I already mentioned from the onset, this is a Weldcraft brand of torch, but uh, I don't know what size it is. Looks like this is the uh, rest of that hose cut off because this has got clearly it's cut on the ends just like that one was this is actually thermal red quarter inch 300 psi cs3 i think not positive but i think this is also the same type of hose they use for oxy acetylene not positive on that, but. Oh, I hooked this line back up because this line is the coolant in line to the solenoid here and it disappears underneath the unit and I don't know where it goes. So that kind of has me a little perplexed. I think on my uh, other unit, both of those lines go to the cooler. This will be uh, an extra gas line, shielding gas line. It's got the fittings right on it that match the other unit. Well, it doesn't have any holes in it. Here's the stinger attached to some welding lead. This is the old style, well, I shouldn't say old style, I still make this style. This is the style here that you, it's got crisscross shapes and everything so you can put the rod in this way or this way or at an angle uh, so that that makes it more versatile that way but some people prefer the pistol grip type that you turn and it locks down on the rod because I guess that'll give you a better condition. This one seems like it's as old as it is. This is a really nice stiff spring in there. That, I don't want to put my finger in there because it'll pinch plenty hard. So you can see who makes this one. Can't quite make out who makes this one. And I guess somewhere on here there should be a rating how many amp this is. I don't see that either. They've long since worn, worn away. I don't know. quite see it. Now, let's see what size the wire is. This is all copper. So you got some money sitting right here. Carol Arc Welding Cable. Viewtron. Number two. So this is a lot lighter than the cable that came with my unit. My, uh, with my other Airco unit. But this is only a 200 amp unit, so I guess that makes sense. That's a pretty long cable. I don't know how many feet I've got there. I'm not going to unwrap this right now, but I don't know. I don't know if I'll use this as an extension cable or 
if I'll just sell it the way it is or scrap it. You know what? Look at that. It's got some bad damage right there. That's new. That just happened. Not when I was unloading it, but in its recent lifetime because you can see in the clean. It looks like it's been bitten a couple of times here and there. See the tape here, here, here. I might just scrap that just for the copper. Sit down one night and just strip all of that insulation off so I can get top dollar for the copper out of this. It feels like, I don't know, I'm thinking 25 pounds maybe. Yeah, yeah, I enrolled the whole thing and walked it to get a rough estimate and it looks like it's going to be a 50 footer on the dot. Curiosity was killing me, so anyways, 50 feet of number two copper. Well, here's the grounding lead. Same number two wire. Only problem is it's only about 25 feet of it. It seems like this was matched to the length of the take torch. So they must have had an additional grounding lead somewhere that they were using when they would stick weld. Huh. I wonder whether or not you would run like uh, if you had a pipe that ran around the uh, outside of your shop, whether or not you could just ground that pipe and do something as strange as, as just hook onto that for your ground. I wonder if they do that. I imagine they do it. Probably not a good thing to do. I don't know. Maybe there's a real safety reason to do it. I mean, obviously, it wouldn't, depending on what the pipe is carrying. But, I mean, if it's just like a steel pipe you got in your shop for airline or something. Why couldn't you do that? I don't know. Anyways, the clamp is kind of nice. It looked kind of old and rusty and I didn't think much of it. And then I looked at it more closely and I realized only this top part right here is stamped steel. This whole bottom part here that the wire hooks into and everything looks like it's solid brass. See, at first glance, this doesn't look like it's worth hanging out, having hang around, but turn it over and it's, this is all brass. So, you got a nice, clean that up and you got a nice, uh, nice contact point on there. Anyways, I think I might keep that and use it. This is a, what does that say, Johnson? Jackson maybe model CO3 I can't quite tell uh, just not that interested I'll just keep it though I guess I will just leave this disconnected because I can see now that I can take out if I unplug these wires off the board here which are just push type speed connectors I can actually take out these four screws Take this whole bracket right out with all the parts on it, keep it as a unit. Yeah. Well, it's funny, I said I didn't have a schematic diagram for this unit. Right here on the inside of the back cover. Here's your uh, basically this tells you how to make your connections. This is the dead giveaway, also, if you didn't already realize that it was three phase. The fact that you've got L1, L2, and L3. If it's a single phase unit, you'll see L1 and L2, and maybe a neutral one, uh, and of course a ground, but you won't see L3. So this is the connection for the jumpers for 230 volt and then if you have 460 volt three phase like in a factory or you know someplace where you get a big commercial operation you can run it off of that these are the jumpers here okay the uh, other reason I opened this up was I want to disconnect the uh, feed power cables here from here because this is a nice cord that's on here this, uh, I think this is that number 10, like that little scrap, but it's a much longer hunk of it, yeah. This is four conductor number 10 wire, so that is nice to have. And this is 
you know, they were using the neutral there for the third phase, but this can easily be used on 220 single phase. Your black and your red are your L1 and L2, and they're interchangeable. Your white's your neutral, and then your uh, green is your ground. So that'll make a nice heavy uh, extension cord for a smaller welder or something. Anyways, uh, I don't know how many feet of that I got. Well, happy birthday to me. I got, looks to be about 35 feet of this 10-4 wire, and I don't see one cut or nick in the whole length of it, other than being dirty. It looks like it's in great shape. In the front here, we can see a, this transformer. You can see that's all copper. So you've got some money sitting there, but that's not where the real scrap money is. The real money's right back here. This big transformer with three big cores. That's all copper. Uh, well, I can't make a confirmation on that, but it sure looks to be copper on the uh, on this thing. And then uh, this is the main transformer. That small transformer in the front there, I believe they call that the control transformer. So on the uh, schematic diagram right here, this is the big transformer. You can obviously see all of the different windings. And then over here, this is your control transformer. And that's tied in. And that has a secondary that creates uh, the DC that is then uh, controlled variably through the remote variable amperage control. And that allows you to, I believe that's going to affect the field in the primary, no, that's actually in the secondary of this transformer. So that's how they're, they're, they're getting your control on your output by the looks of it and then over here this circuit right here is run off of another secondary on that small transformer and this is probably your high frequency because I see some capacitors right here and these right here are probably the spark gaps and they're labeled RC3 and again RC is a common abbreviation for uh, a resistance capacitance network uh, a timing circuit to create uh, frequency. Now this was kind of interesting. Right here they're showing sure looks to me like a voltmeter and ammeter in the circuit. And so I'd have to assume that on some models they had a, uh, a voltmeter and an ammeter mounted in the front panel and they just uh, use the same schematic diagram regardless of which model you have. I even like this clamp connector here, this input connector. It's got this little uh, wire cage here, and that's to protect it from from getting, you know, it gets hit by something right there, and flexing it and ripping it out. That's a, uh, I don't know what they call that kind of connector, but I bet you if you went to buy one in the electrical supply, they'd probably get you 15 or 20 bucks for that thing. I might just repurpose that on the other welder. Well, I'm getting ready to wrap it up. Unfortunately, I'm out of time today to uh, enter the scrapping phase of the project here. The, um, this hose, it just goes underneath, and then there's an uh, interesting kind of clamp that's clamped to the frame uh, under, underneath there, so that must ground, that must uh, provide a ground for the coolant uh, to, to make the coolant a ground path. So, uh, that's the nearest I could figure for that, and then the hose is just cut off. So that hose probably originally came back out on the other side maybe and went to the cooler. Um, so I'm just going to hook this thing up and drive it out of here so it's not sitting here in the yard. And then uh, the next time I uh, work on this, I'll be taking off the sides. Figure I'll be saving these sheet metal sides. They're nice big uh, hunks of sheet metal that I could cut. Uh, for projects. Don't know yet what I'll make, but you never know. I used to just take that to the scrap yard, but when it's a nice li large sheet like that, two of them to be exact, and you might even be able to use the top for something. Looks like the top comes off real easy. A few screws, but uh, I'll save that for next time.